Arguably the hottest topic for students, especially pre-med and medical students, is study strategies. Like how are you studying with so much material that you have to cover? It has to be some combination of reading a textbook and taking at least five notebooks worth of notes and then repeating for the next class. Well, that may work for some, but I know for me personally, I don't even remember the last time that I've touched a notebook. Now, people like me who aren't the textbook or writing notes type may be intimidated by medical school or just school in general, and that makes sense because historically, whenever we think of school, we think of people opening up textbooks, having their notebook sitting right next to them, and writing notes, following lecture, going over and highlighting in their textbook, and that's just what we think of when we think of school. But if you are like me, you're gonna be happy to know that success in school does not depend on reading textbooks and writing in a notebook. And actually the science behind learning backs this up pretty strongly. One central principle backed by research for learning is this idea of spaced repetition. Now trying to figure out the best way to study, the best way to learn and remember material, this is not a new idea that researchers are just now trying to figure out. This has been something that people have been looking into for about a hundred years now. Let's take it all the way back to 1932, where a British psychologist and philosopher named C.A. Mace wrote a book called Psychology of Study, where he is quoted saying, perhaps the most important discoveries are those which relate to the appropriate distribution of the periods of study. Acts of revision should be spaced in gradually increasing intervals. And since this time, he basically opened up the floodgate of trying to figure out the best ways to study, and essentially all of the research has concluded that at the root of effective and efficient studying is spaced repetition. And even if you've never heard of the term spaced repetition, I can guarantee that somebody has told you, whether it's been your teacher or your mama, cramming does not work. Cramming is on one end of the spectrum, spaced repetition is on the other. This one works a lot better. But you're probably asking, what does this have to do with not using notes and still succeeding in medical school or just in school in general? And it's because this idea of space repetition is a general framework that each student can build their own personal study strategies around and it doesn't have to have anything to do with textbooks or notebooks. Using space repetition as the foundation of my study strategies has allowed me to find success using two key principles consistently reviewing material and consistently testing my knowledge. Now I'm gonna take a quick second just to walk through a typical day of studying and then we'll dive into the details. Now this actually starts the night before where I'm reviewing material for the upcoming lecture that I'm gonna have in class the next day. So I'll do things like reviewing the teacher's PowerPoints, making sure that I have a general understanding of what's gonna be presented in lecture. And when I am going through this first pass of the material, there's absolutely no pressure to really grasp everything that I'm reading, everything that I'm looking at on these PowerPoint slides. It's just so that I can have a decent understanding of what we're gonna be learning. And after I've previewed the material, then I'll go to Anki, which don't worry, we'll get into a little more later, which will basically help me assess how much of it I actually know, how much of it I actually remember. But again, there is no pressure for me to really have this stuff down at this point. Then the next morning, I'll do all of my Anki review cards. This includes reviewing cards related to older classes, as well as the cards that I just unlocked and just started the night before. Then after previewing the lecture the night before and essentially reviewing that material twice, I will go to lecture and I will not take a single note. I'm not highlighting anything in a textbook. I'm not jotting notes down in my iPad. All I'm focused on is trying to stay present and follow the lecture as it's presented. And I found that I actually learn and retain what's being taught so much more when I'm not trying to balance that with taking my own notes. And because I've seen this material a few times at this point, following it makes it that much easier, which again, makes it that much easier to learn it. Now, if there were still parts of the lecture that I just didn't understand or just wanted to supplement my learning in some way, I won't turn to a textbook. We're going straight to the internet. There are so many video resources out there to kind of supplement learning, especially in medical school. I'm in microbiology and pharmacology right now, and I can tell you that I essentially binge watch Sketchy every night before bed. And then after that, I'll repeat and prep for the next day. No textbooks, no notes. Now, one thing that I've learned from doing this is that the depth of my understanding stems from how many times I can see the material, how many reps of that material I can get in. So I get one rep from previewing that material, I get another rep from going to class and having it presented to me, and then I just get a ton of reps from my ongoing Anki. And this brings us right back to the foundation of learning, spaced repetition. Anki is a flashcard tool that spaces out material for you to review, and there are so many amazing videos out there on YouTube on Anki, so if you are unfamiliar with Anki, I recommend just throw it in your YouTube search bar and you will be blown away. But where I believe Anki becomes the most valuable tool, especially for medical students, is that there are amazing students out there who have already created libraries of cards, basically with everything that you need to know related to medical school. So let's head to the computer and I'm gonna show you exactly how I use this tool. 
So you can see I have these decks of cards here. Again, the majority of the cards, these flash cards that I use are pre-made. I only have a few cards that I've actually made myself. But what I wanna show you is that this is exactly how you can use Anki to study, review, and not one note is needed. So the Anking is essentially the greatest tool for medical students, in my opinion. They have basically gone through every course that you're going to take in medical school and created an Anki deck specific for it. And because most, most medical schools teach very similar, especially for those first two years, they essentially teach based on these Anki decks. They may not even know it, but they do. Now there are thousands of cards in these pre-made decks, but what's nice is that they're tagged so they can correspond with certain topics. And so what I'll do is after I've previewed that lecture, I have a general understanding of what topic that I'll be learning and what topic that I need to have a good understanding of. So let's say for example, I'm in microbiology and we're learning about gram positive cocci. So what I can do is I can actually search based on these tags gram positive cocci and I can turn on only cards related to this topic and then I can start having flashcards, pre-made flashcards already related to the specific information that I'm learning in class. So I'll show you what I mean. So if I just go up to this browse here, you can see that a lot of the topics are again based on these tags. That's what this symbol is over here on this left side where my cursor is. And you can see if I'm looking for gram positive cocci, it's as simple as clicking here and I have a ton of cards with this tag, gram positive cocci, that's gonna cover basically everything that I need to, that's the same material that was presented in my lecture. And it's pre-made flashcards that's going to allow me to practice what I learned from reviewing the lecture. But you can see how simply previewing and going to lecture and then reviewing that material using Anki is essentially all that you need to do to learn the material. And after I've unlocked or turned on the cards based on the lecture that I've prepared for, I'll continue to see these cards in a gradually increasing time frame. So I may see the same cards the next morning, and then if I see them again and I know them, then I'll see them again in a few days and then a few weeks and a few months. But I'll continue to see these same cards and that spaced repetition is what's gonna solidify that information to my mind. Now there's still that second principle that I mentioned earlier, consistently testing my knowledge. Now Anki in a way does this, but practice questions are gold in medical school. Like students will literally fiend for some practice questions. Hey yo bro, you got any of them practice questions bro? because testing your knowledge is actually the best way to apply what you're learning. And this is gonna be key for when you're taking tests or you're just practicing as a physician. And this brings me to the sponsor of today's video, Lecturio, that has an absolutely incredible question bank. Oh yeah, and still no pencil and paper, but let's go to the iPad so I can show you exactly how I would use Lecturio's question bank. And just to start, you can see here, they have a question of the day for you to get your, as they put it, your daily challenge in. But what I wanna show you is how extensive this QBank is. So you can see here that they have custom tests where you can choose the amount of questions that you wanna do, the specific subjects, or you can have pre-made exams already ready and at hand, which I absolutely love. And they also break it down into specific large board licensing exams, such as step one, so all of the material that, you, that you'll see in step one, step two, and then even other exams that other medical students may be taking like Comlex. Now, if we go over here to this exam prep, you can see here that they have exam preparation specific to the board exams. And so for example, if I wanted to start 40 days out for my step one exam, I can follow this schedule and I will get through 3,109 questions similar to questions that I'm going to be seeing on step one. Like that is absolutely amazing. Or if I plan slightly more ahead, I can take 99 days and I can get through 2,669 QBank questions, over 3,000 videos, and almost 10,000 quiz questions. So you can see how vast this library of questions is. And again, quiz questions, question banks, those are gold in medical school. And as I scroll down, you can see that they have subjects, each of these subjects being a subject that you'll take in medical school. And what's nice is that these are actually scheduled out exam prep that walk you through a specific subject. So again, if I had those questions and I just needed a little video resource, I can also get that using Lecturio. So let's say, again, I'm in microbiology. If I wanted to follow this schedule out so I can be prepared for my microbiology test, you can see here, they break it down into blocks. There's nine blocks. And you can see block one, 45 videos, and 109 quiz questions. So I can use this to continue to progress throughout my own block, 
having access to a ton of not only videos, but a ton of those quiz questions. And you can see in other blocks, we also have QBank questions, which are more representative of what I actually see on the exam. But again, if you just wanted to get a few questions under your belt and you didn't want to follow an exam schedule, you can create your own test. You can do things like have a tutor, you can turn the timer on, you can even select the difficulty. Let's say that I just want hard questions related only to pharmacology and I want all the systems and I want to do 40 questions related to that. It's going to be timed and they're going to be hard. I can start my test and you can see here, this is exactly what I want. I want a nice board style question, a QBank question, and I want it to be timed. You can see I have 60 minutes to complete these 40 difficult pharmacology questions. So you can see how a workflow, including things like lecture and video resources, followed by Anki that utilizes space repetition, can really help you learn and retain material. And then testing this knowledge regularly using resources like Lecturio makes for a pretty good workflow. And the key is that it requires absolutely no note taking, no textbooks, no highlighters, no pens, no nothing. Well, I guess you need something. You, you need a computer at least, but <laughs> I hope that this video goes to show that even if you aren't a student who likes to read textbooks or write notes down, you can still be extremely successful in medical school or just in school in general. Let me know if you're a note taker or not in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, which I hope you did, make sure you smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe and tap that bell if you haven't already. But of course, until the next one, keep evolving and we'll see you guys soon. <laughs>